Hey, good morning. Happy birthday. Yeah, I remember it's the church's birthday today, right? Happy Pentecost to you, yeah. It's so amazing. I see all this red, and you already forgot what's happening here today. Man. Well, it's so good to see each and every one of you here in this place, in this space, uh, whether you are a member or a guest. Uh, we thank you for being here this morning. For those that are online, we thank you so much for tuning in and making this Spring Valley United Methodist Church, this 10 o'clock worship, the place to be uh, for your worshiping needs. As always, uh, folks, remember to register your attendance. There are the green cards in the pews in front of you. Uh, also, add any prayers that may be on your mind, whether they be great or not so great. Every prayer counts, okay? Um, also, uh, as you can tell, it's a youth-led service today, so I don't have to do much. That's a great thing, but it's also great to have the youth here doing it as well. So uh, thank them so much for, for taking the time on, their, on a Sunday during the week to be able to be a, a very big part of this worshiping experience. So at this time, I'm going to ask for Sam and Deacon to come up and give our announcements. Good morning. Good morning. Today, after worship, the youth group will head to North Fork Mall from 11.30 to 1.30. Be sure to let Miss Shay know you're coming. The week of June 17th through the 21st, the youth will have worship arts camp. Registration is still open and youth leaders are still needed. From June 23rd to June 29th, the youth will have a mission trip to Austin, Texas and serve with the UM Army. That Sunday, June 23rd, we'll have a send-off service, and June 30th, we'll have a testimony service where the youth will be sharing about their experience with the UF, UM Army. We, we gather on this beautiful Sunday to celebrate Jesus' love and ch for, for children, children and youth, to rejoice in his invitation, let the children come to me. To give thanks for his blessing, to such belong to the kingdom of God. Lord, open our hearts and minds to the old, old story of your kindness and grace. So, so we might live the new, new, new story of your life shaped love in the next generation today.
Please remain standing and join us in this morning's affirmation of faith. We are not alone, and we live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is created, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. At this time, please, uh, children, come on forward for children's time with Miss Maggie. Good morning, everyone. It is so good to be with you today. Today is a very special day for the church. Can so everyone? Usually, you wait impatiently for your birthdays, holidays like Christmas, Easter. Can you guess what special day it is for church today? Does anyone want to say it? Okay, yes, it's the church's birthday today. And whenever it's the church's birthday, we call it Pentecost. That's when the church was born. So on this day, God did something amazing. He gave us a gift, a very precious gift. On this day, God breathed life into the lives of those who came together in the name of Jesus. And that means God poured out all this wonderful life and love onto the people of the new church. We are a church family and a community that come together in the name of Jesus. So, today is a very important day. I bet you guys were all wondering why I have this box. I was definitely wondering. <laughs> so, can you guys take a guess what's going to be inside of the box? Does anyone want to guess? If it's a birthday, what do you think could be inside? That is good. We do have a birthday gift bag inside. <gasps> Ooh, look at that. Something fell out. <gasps> what else is inside? <gasps> Balloons. <gasps> birthday hat. Good job. Is that a cake topper? Yeah. It's a cake topper. That is fascinating. You guys got to open the gifts. Do all of these belong for a birthday? Yeah, they make sense, right? So, we got to open the box that had all the birthday gifts. What else do you do on a birthday? What else? Yeah. Sing happy birthday. Good job. Do you guys want to join us in singing happy birthday for the church? Yes, it sounds good, right? Okay, we can start in one, two, three. Happy birthday to the church. 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 To the church. Wow, you guys have wonderful voices. I love it. So. Don't forget, guys, after worship today, remember to grab a party favor. They should be outside by the end of the worship. So can everyone get ready to pray with me? Let's pray.
put our hands together. Dear God, we are excited today to celebrate the church's birthday. Thank you for the gift of our church, church family, and your great love for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. Good morning, Spring Valley. I'm Jerry Malone, a former member of the uh, Mission Committee. Over the years, we've brought you many updates on Saluti Pass. Uh, this time today, Sunday, will be no different. But there is a twist. Rather than hearing from me or some other mission member, uh, we have with us today the executive directors of uh, Project Saluti Pass, Laura Shearer, visiting with us. She will provide us with a first-hand overview of Project Saluti Pass. It's my honor, my honor to introduce Laura Shearer. Laura. Thank you. Good morning. Well, for anyone who doesn't know, Saluti Paz means health and peace in Spanish. And for anyone who hasn't uh, encountered the mission of our organization before, we do health and education in Guatemala. We work in an indigenous area of Guatemala in the Mayan highlands. Uh, Spring Valley has been partnering with us for more than 20 years. It is an incredible partnership. And, is, and has worked with us in, with mission teams going down to Guatemala, has been a very important uh, fundraising partner, uh, has also served on our board of directors, and that has helped us develop as an organization. Partnerships like Spring Valley were incredibly important to us, particularly as we passed through trying times like the pandemic, and helped us to evolve and adapt as we needed to respond to the needs of the communities as we're seeing them today, which have changed. And I wanted to tell you today about the needs in education and health that we're seeing that you may not know about because they've really evolved. Um, so let me start with the school. To provide some context, uh, in Guatemala, the Department of Education effectively shut down schools for three years. So last year was the first year that we were able to open our school again to normal operations. So when the students returned, our teachers saw that those learning gaps in the students were very significant because the student population that we work with already encounters significant barriers to learning. We work with a very vulnerable population. That is the mission of our school. So when they returned, we couldn't uh, apply the same programs that we had prior to the pandemic. We had to adapt, we had to evolve our programs. Our school, which already provides uh, uh, pre-primary education and provides uh, nutrition, um, the, the meals, the medical and dental care, now we needed to provide more. And now we're providing psychology screening. Uh, we're offering individual tuition if the students need it. We're also providing parent education. We're working with community leaders and providing social work, all within an effort to provide more support to our families who are encountering great challenges. And we want to do this so that they can succeed and excel in their, in their education. On the health side, um, Diabetes and hypertension are chronic illnesses that were already on the rise in Guatemala. Now, as we sort of emerge from the pandemic, um, the cost of living is increasing tremendously. It is very, very difficult for someone with a chronic illness to manage that disease in that context. Um, food insecurity and malnutrition are, are going up. 
So what we're doing is partnering with our patients. We're actually going out into the communities more. We're training health promoters so that they have a point of contact in their community to monitor their disease uh, so that they can check in with. We're opening our clinic more days of the week so they have somewhere to come that's accessible where they can get medications more days of the week. And we're doing education every single day so that they can learn how to manage their disease in this context. So they're just a couple, two examples of what, how we're responding today to the needs we're seeing in the communities in, in, in these new challenges. We're only able to do that because of partnerships like the one we have with Spring Valley and with your support. So I want to thank you today for a 20-year partnership, and I want to thank you today for your love and care for the people of Guatemala. Thank you very much. Good morning, Spring Valley. Happy birthday. <laughs> Dear God, on this Youth Sunday, we are especially thankful for our youth. Thank you for their energy, their willingness to lead us in worship this morning, their creativity, their honesty, and how they help us to see the world from their perspective. We pray your blessings to be upon them this morning. Remind each our youth that they have been created in your image. Your likeness is embedded within their very souls. You have given each of them a purpose. You have given them everything they need to reach their fullest potential. When they face any challenge or temptation, remind them that our grace is being extended to them in any given moment to empower them to make good choices. May they never feel that they are alone because you are always with them. Your Holy Spirit is with them in whatever situation they may be facing. During those times when they struggle, experience disappointment, or feel like they have failed in some way, come alongside them so that they might know there's always a new beginning because of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. During any time of discouragement, re remind them that with you, there is always new life, forgiveness, hope, joy, peace, and love. Remind us that our youth are not simply the future of the church. They are the church of today. We are all your church together in this very moment. We are here for each other because that's what it means to be your church. May this time of blessing and prayer renew our strength today, whatever our age. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Grace to you and peace from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Hey. Welcome to worship. Uh, am I on? Yeah, I'm on. Okay, great. Uh, my name is Pastor Frank, and uh, what a joy it is to worship together on this Pentecost Sunday, the day that the Spirit was given to the church. I uh, want to say a special word of welcome to my mom, Pat. She's here, right there behind Chris. So, uh, thanks, Mom, for being here. Uh, we're celebrating. She came up to visit and uh, celebrating James' graduation from college yesterday. So been a good day for a good weekend for our family. Anyway, uh, I'm going to call our ushers, our student ushers this morning to come forward that our worship may continue with our giving. And so I, I invite us to pray together. Lord God, uh, your spirit created the church. Your spirit anoints each of us with gifts and with power. And so we pray now that as we share our financial gifts uh, in this moment, as we've given throughout the week uh, through online giving, Lord, that you would bless the gift and the giver, that empowered by the Holy Spirit, we may go out to share the good news of the love of you and Jesus and the Holy Spirit combined together. Thank you for your mercy, your grace, and your forgiveness that you give to each of us. In the name of Jesus, we pray and give. Amen.
Okay, will you introduce yourself? Yes, um, my name is Ashley Staten. I'm 17 years old and uh, I've attended SVMC since preschool. So oh my goodness, since preschool. So I have two yes. questions to start us off with. What is your, I guess, earliest memory here at Spring Valley? Um, well, my earliest memory would be preschool, um, going to each class every day, each Sunday, and then attending church. Um, and my favorite memory, my overall favorite memory would be um, the mission trip, the Houston mission trip. Oh yeah, that's right. Yes, because um, I love going down and helping all the homeless people and packing the food boxes. Wonderful. Ashley, where are you graduating from? Um, I'm graduating from Richardson High School, class of 2024. Awesome. And is it true that you're graduating a year early? Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. And then what are your future plans? Um, my future plans are to attend Richland for two years and transfer to potentially TWU because I want to be a nurse. That's great. Ashley, how can we pray for you? Um, I would say pr just pray that I can get into nursing school and that I pass the test to become a nurse and just pray just have to have God by my side through everything. Wonderful. We will do that for sure. Thank you. We are so proud of you, Ashley. You've been here since every time this mic and me. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, we're just so proud of you, sweetie. I can't believe you've been here since preschool, and I've been able to work with you for five years. You have such a special place in my heart, and you know we're here to celebrate you, and we're just so proud of you a year early. That is an accomplishment. There we go, perfect, all right. Uh, a reading from Ezekiel 37, verses one through 14. The Lord's power overcame me, and while I was in the Lord's spirit, fed me out and sent me down in the middle of a certain valley. It was full of bones. Fed me through them all around, and I saw that there were a great many of them on the valley floor, and they were very dry. He asked me, human one, can these bones live again? I said, Lord God, only you know. He said to me, prophesy over these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the Lord's word. The Lord God proclaims to these bones, I'm about to put breath in you and you will live again. I'll put sinews on you, place flesh on you and cover you with skin. When I put breath in you and you come to life, you will know that I am the Lord. I prophesy just as I was commanded there were a great noise as I was prophesying, and then a great quaking, and the bones came together, bone by bone. When I looked, suddenly there were sinews on them. The flesh appeared, and then they were covered over with skin, but there was still no breath in them. He said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophes prophesy human one, say to the breath, the Lord God proclaims, come from the four winds, breathe, breathe into these dead bodies and let them live. I prophesied just as he commanded me. When the breath entered them, they came to life and stood on their feet, an extraordinarily large company. He said to me, human one, these bones are the entire house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope has perished. We are completely finished. So now prophesy and say to them, the Lord God proclaims, I'm opening your graves. I will raise you up from your graves, my people, and bring you to Israel's fertile land. 
You will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you up from your graves, my people. I will put my breath in you and you will live. I will plant you on fertile land and you will know that I am the Lord. I've spoken and I will do it. This is what the Lord says. This is the word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So the Bible is filled with all kinds of crazy stories. Did anyone know that there was a zombie story in the Bible? Oh my gosh, we should be reading this around Halloween. John should be playing something creepy at the organ while we're reading the story. I mean, Ezekiel, the prophet that, that served, uh, comes to this valley and God says to him, look out and what do you see? And it's piles and piles of dismembered bones that have just been bleached by the August Texas sun. And God says to the prophet, and these bones live again. And he says, only you, know, Lord, Lord, only you would know, Lord, which means, I have no idea why I'm even here. This is, this is nightmare type stuff. It's so creepy. But God says, prophesy to the bones. O okay, what, what do I say to a bunch of dismembered bones in this valley? But... Ezekiel starts to call upon them. And, well, I could have you imagine it, but thankfully, uh, Ezekiel had his phone with him that day <laughs> and was able to record what happened next. Brandon's going to show it to us. <laughs> himself in this dark space watching all this happen and then God says now prophesy to the bodies what? and Ezekiel starts talking to the bodies and then the bodies that are now fully enfleshed no longer just skeletons they begin to rise and stand up oh it's the walking dead the bible version of it <laughs> How can this happen? What's going on here? Uh, there's, a, there's a really cool little uh, Hebrew trick that's going on here. A, a biblical Hebrew, the, the same word for wind is the same word as spirit and the same word as breath. So in Genesis 1 where it says that God began to create all of the universe and the spirit hovered over the darkness that's the breath the wind uh, the hebrew word is ruach the ruach of god breathing winding over the spirit uh, later in genesis 2 when god creates the first human being it says come on bible it says God formed the first person and blew life's breath, spirit, ruach, blew life's breath into his nostrils and the human came to life. This is exactly what Ezekiel is witnessing again here in the valley. The spirit, the ruach being blown into all these bodies that were once dismembered bones have now been remembered, brought back together 
And now the breath of God, the spirit of God, the life of God is in them and they rise. And God uh, breaks the tension by saying, well, okay, what's happening here, Ezekiel, is that this is a parable about my people. The nation of Israel. They've lost everything. They've lost the homeland. They've been captured and brought into captivity in a foreign land. They've lost Jerusalem. They've lost the temple that Solomon built. All that they had dreamed for and celebrated, all has been lost. And they're desperate. They're like a giant pile of dismembered bones bleached in the summer sun. God says to the prophet, human one, these bones are the entire house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up, our hope has perished, we are completely finished. Anybody ever felt that way? My bones are dried up, I am completely finished. Did anybody nod hands or raise hands when I, when I was reading, I was looking down. Don't we feel that way every now and then? Can new life come into these dead bones of mine? This dismembered life that I'm stuck in, this black hole of suffering and questions and anxieties, is this all that there is? Is there no hope? So now prophesy, God says to the prophet, and tell my people, I'm opening your graves. I will raise you up from your graves, my people, and I will bring you back to Israel's fertile land. God says, your future belongs to me, yeah? In the midst of your suffering, in the midst of your loss of hope, I remember you will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you up from your graves, my people. I will put my breath in you. What's the word for breath in Hebrew? Spirit. Yeah, you're right. He, Ruach, yes. <laughs> Spirit. So every time God says breath, breathe, wind, in this text, it's spirit. If you're asking what does the Holy Spirit do, why do we celebrate Pentecost? Yes, it's the birthday of the church, but it's also the renewal of the church. Yeah? It's an annual observance. Not to remember something that only happened one time, but something that continually happens. So let's read it in that context. God says to the prophet, prophesy over these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the Lord's word. The Lord proclaims these burns, I am about to put spirit in you, and you will live again. I'm about to put spirit in you, and you will come to life and know that I'm the Lord. The flesh appeared and they were covered with skin, but there was still no spirit in them. And so God said, prophesy to the spirit Say to the Spirit, the Lord proclaims, come from the four winds, or Spirit, breath, Spirit, come from every direction upon this place, upon these bodies, and let them live again. Prophesy to the Spirit. Say to the Spirit, the Lord God proclaims, and when the Spirit entered them, they came to life and stood on their feet, an extraordinarily large company. I will put my spirit in you, and you will live. So Jesus takes the disciples out of town to the outside parts of Jerusalem, this is last week's story. And he's beginning to ascend, right? The third window. He starts to rise to the skies. And he commissions them. 
Go into Jerusalem and wait for the Holy Spirit. When the Spirit comes, you will be my witnesses to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Go and wait for the Spirit. And so they left that place and went and hung out in Jerusalem. They didn't know how long they were going to be waiting. But the thing is, Pentecost is a Jewish festival. It's not a Christian festival. It didn't start with just the church. It's a harvest festival. And so when Pentecost comes, Jews from all over the world are gathered in Jerusalem because they're celebrating the coming of the harvest. And it's when all these pilgrims are gathered together and the disciples are in the upper room praying together, worshiping, waiting for the Spirit. It's at this moment in this festival that the Holy Spirit is given to the disciples. And Acts chapter 2 tells us that as the Spirit came upon them, it was like tongues of fire. You see the fourth window? Y'all can't see it because of the pillar. But the, fire, the Spirit in the form of a dove comes and brings fire. It's also on your bulletin cover. The tongues of fire alight upon the apostles. And the Spirit gives them ability to speak in other languages, not just their native Hebrew. And they go out into the streets of Jerusalem and begin to proclaim the good news of, of the risen Savior, transformed by the power of God. These broken down, pile of bones disciples whose Messiah has been resurrected and then ascended, and who knows what's going to happen next. Now these disciples are given new flesh. Now they're apostles, which means teacher, not disciple, which is a student. And they go out and teach what God has done. They're transformed. The Spirit brings transformation into the life of the believer. Lives are changed. Can these bones live again? So, a few months ago, we had a, we had a team here that's been doing some work called a Crossroads team. And we sent a survey around to the church, just trying to, just asking some questions about, uh, let's see, spiritually, where's the church? You know, what, what are the things that we're holding on to that we might need to be getting rid of, leaving behind? What's the emotional state of the church? And one of the questions we asked on the survey is, when were you most optimistic about Spring Valley United Methodist Church. Now, I'm just going to read the data that y'all responded to in the survey. This, I did not take the survey. It was for y'all. I've only been here for a year. Okay. 9% of the people, this is about 65 people that took this thing, 9% were most optimistic about the church between 1960 and 1979. Whew, that was a long time ago, y'all. 24% of the people were most optimistic about the church between 1980 and 1999. That was a century ago. I'm just sharing your, these are just your stuff. Uh, half the people, 52%, were most optimistic about the church between the years 2000 and 2019. 12% most optimistic the last few years. And 30%... Most optimistic about Spring Valley today and in the near future. Can these bones live again? Can the Spirit be breathed into us again? Can God knit together this pile of bones and give us new flesh? Give us new wind? Give us new breath? I'm hearing a couple yeses and a couple nods. Yes. This is the work of the Spirit. And many of us are wearing red today to remember those tongues of fire that alighted upon the disciples. But y'all, that Spirit comes upon each of us at our baptism. And in that moment, we are anointed with gifts of the Holy Spirit. Some of us are teachers, some of us are administrators, some of us are servants, some of us are healers. There's a whole list of 20 gifts that we have 
that come from the Spirit at our baptism. And then those gifts are used to minister to the gospel all around the world, in Guatemala and throughout all the things that we do here in Spring Valley, including within the congregation and in this neighborhood in which we've been appointed by God. Yeah? So I want to just give a word of encouragement today. It's kind of a creepy story. Don't read it with the lights off and the, and the, and the curtains drawn. But even in that scary, dark place, new life happens. Yeah? That's the, that's the story of the gospel. The women went to the tomb on Easter morning looking for a dead body, right? They didn't find a dead body. God says, I will renew all of creation, even these dry bones in this valley. Even these dry bones at Spring Valley United Methodist Church, I will bring new breath. Yeah? That's the good news that we celebrate and we welcome the Spirit to blow through this place again and alight upon us, changing us, that we may be more faithful to the mission to which God is calling us. I want to close with a prayer. And as I pray this thing, I'm going to pause. It's a, it's a litany. So I'm going to pause every now and then. And when I pause, I want you all to say together, these bones can live. All right? So you're going to hear me. I'm going to read a little paragraph. I'm going to pause. And then we'll all say together, these bones can live. We'll do this four or five times. Okay, let's pray. Beloved of God, pay attention. Did you notice? There are dry bones all around us, in our neighborhoods, our workplaces, our schools, our community and nation and world. They pop up wherever people are parched for love and dignity, provision and flourishing. We notice them and we say, these bones can live. Pay attention. Can you hear it? So many of us carry dry bones that clank around in our hearts. Dreams are dying, gifts that are languishing, hopes left undernourished and neglected, loneliness that eats away at our sense of connection with one another. But we say, these bones can live. Pay attention. Can you feel it? The Holy Spirit breathes among us. Breathe in love. Breathe in provision. Breathe in connection and flourishing because the Spirit never quits breathing among us. We say, these bones can live. Pay attention. Can you sense it? God is always putting us back together in dreams of abundance and visions of cooperation, in the cacophony of voices who share and receive the good news in their own languages, the Spirit revives us and restores us, reminding us these bones can live. And so send forth your Spirit, O God, and renew the face of the earth. Dwell among us even though your presence will startle and unsettle us. Grant us your peace, we pray, as justice and love pour down upon the yearning earth. Amen. Amen. We are all invited to the table of the Lord today on the birth date of the church. It's appropriate to share together in the Lord's Supper the gift that Jesus gave to remember that he is always with us. And the United Methodist Church, this is an open table. That means that we're all welcome to come. We don't have to be members of the church. We don't even need to be believers at this point. We come by God's grace, responding to the invitation that the Lord Christ gives to each of us. And so whether we're a member of the church or not, it doesn't matter to God or to me or to anyone else. This is the Lord's table. It's not mine. 
It's not the churches. We come at Christ's invitation. As we come this morning, there will be two pairs of servers down front by the baptismal font. The choir will come first. They'll model this, but you will be given a piece of bread. You'll dip it into the cup and take bread and juice together in one bite. If you eat the bread before dipping it into the cup, don't pull it back out again. We'll give you another piece of bread. Dip to the cup. Take both elements together. And then after receiving, you're welcome to come to the altar and pray as long as you would like. I invite you to join with me in the great Thanksgiving. It's printed uh, on the screens. Whoa, hello. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenants to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. When nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. At his baptism in the Jordan, your spirit descended upon him and declared him your beloved son. With your spirit upon him, Jesus turned away the temptations of sin. Your spirit anointed Jesus to preach good news to the poor to proclaim release to the, captivity, to the captives and recovering of sights to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce the time had come when he would save your people. Jesus healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, he gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always, baptizing us with the Holy Spirit and with fire, as on the day of Pentecost. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this to remember me. When the supper was over, the Lord took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to the disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by the disciples in the breaking of the bread. And in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so... In remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and grape juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by Christ's blood and empowered by the gifts of the Spirit. And by your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, showing forth the fruit of the Spirit until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as children of God, we pray together as the Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats the bread that I offer will never go hungry. Jesus said, I will give you water that will become a gushing fountain within you, and you will never be thirsty. I invite our communion servers to come and the choir to come to be served first. Pour out your spirit, Lord, on your people. Pour out your spirit, Lord, on your people. Pour out your spirit, Lord, on your people. Let it rain. Let it rain. Pour out your mercy, Lord, on your people. Pour out your mercy, Lord, on your people. Pour out your mercy, Lord, on your people. Let it rain. Let it rain. Turn the hearts of fathers to the children and every nation to the God of love and holiness. Let the fire of your spirit burn. Pour out your fire, Lord, on your people. Pour out your fire, Lord, on your people. Pour out your fire, Lord, on your people. Let it rain. Let it rain.
And at this time, as we sing our, uh, our closing hymn, we invite those uh, that have your offerings for the dimes a day to come forward during the, the closing hymn. And at this time, let us stand and sing from the faith we sing, number 2,237, as the fire is meant for burning. Let us stand and sing. Great service today. Thank you for our youth group who helped to, to lead worship. Great job. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, great job. Great job. Thanks for coming to share about the work of Salute de Paz and God bless your ministry there in Guatemala. The music was amazing. Y'all were great. Y'all showed up this morning. Thank you. Thank you so much. So we go out from this pr place proof that new bones can be born. Yeah? That old bones can be renewed. And so we go out into the world and labor to bring forth new life. Dream dreams, pursue visions, and speak of God's goodness in the words of those who would hear. And may the God who breathed life into creation be your delight. May Christ Jesus give hope to your dreaming. And may the Holy Spirit, your advocate and supporter, set your hearts ablaze with a passion for peace. We go in peace and love to serve the Lord in the name of Christ and powered by the Holy Spirit.